Hi everybody, welcome back to Jimmy's Promo and today we're going to talk about eight things that you just need to know about your Samsung Galaxy devices so this way you can have a better all around experience, maybe get it optimized, maybe learn a few of the features that maybe you've never played with before. And even though today's video is shot with the Galaxy S23 Ultra, the majority or all of these will actually move over to any other of the Samsung Pass devices. So if you don't own a Galaxy S23 series device, don't worry about it. More than likely, whatever I'm going to show you will also work with your device as well. And I'll place timestamps below the video so this way if you want to go through all the different topics that we'll be taking a look at you can skip around move around uh, and also just see again what all we're talking about now the first one that i want to cover is going to be one that is dealing with virtual ram or v or vram now in samsung they call it ram plus now i noticed that when i switched from the galaxy s22 ultra to the s23 ultra maybe it's because of samsung smart switch but when i took a look at my memory uh, the ram plus was turned on and it was using eight gigs so i don't know if that is right out of the box or if it's just because of whatever i did with smart switch so let me show you where it's at because i went through it quick but this is something that you do want to turn off Yes, it is nice to do on other devices if you don't have much RAM in your phone, but this phone right here, the Galaxy S23 Ultra, has 12 gigs of RAM. There's no need to have any more. So inside of settings, you go inside of battery and device care, and then you click on memory. Now inside of here, originally, it was actually turned on in 8 gigs. Now what happens is when you're using virtual RAM versus physical RAM, the physical RAM is much faster. So if you're taking some of your internal storage and using it as virtual RAM, you're actually slowing down your phone just because it is not meant for that. So if you do have it turned on, all you have to do is basically just turn this thing off and you're gonna notice that it's gonna ask you to just restart your phone. And I also did notice that when I switched this RAM Plus off and I used my normal uh, physical RAM, the phone is moving a little bit more smooth than before. So if you're running into any issues, if your phone's not being as quick or as smooth as you think, you might want to make sure you turn off that, that RAM Plus. Also, right here, you can see that my S Pen, my battery percentage is actually being shown on that battery widget. Now, I got it to work one time when I was shooting another video in the future, or I should say another video in the past, but on my normal day-to-day -day, you know, usage, I was not able to see the battery percentage of my S Pen until I turned off that virtual RAM, and then now it actually gives me the battery life of the S Pen. So I kind of feel that it actually helps some of the other features that these phones offer you if you were to turn off your RAM Plus. Now the next feature that we're gonna talk about today is one that could you know, maybe vary on your carrier or if you have unlocked. Now mine is unlocked with an AT&T SIM card inside. Now one of the things that you do wanna turn on because this is not on when you first get your phone is you wanna go inside of your phone and you wanna hit on settings. Now inside of settings, you wanna make sure you turn this on, which is caller ID and spam protection. So it's gonna use Haya, uh, and maybe if you're in another country, it might use a different you know, uh, uh, company or a different application for this one, but it uses Haya to identify spam and spam callers, as well as other callers who aren't in your contacts. So you can block and spam calls. So you can either block all spam and scam calls or only block high risk scam calls. So right now I have it as blocking high risk, and I might switch it to this one up here, but, I know for a fact that the high risk ones I don't want to have at all. And maybe there's just somebody trying to call me that I don't have their number saved and maybe it looks like a scam number, but it really isn't. So I'll give them the benefit of the doubt and maybe try to see if they want to come through. So this is one of those things that you want to turn on if you have this option for the caller ID and spam. Now to go along with this option here that I didn't click, which is blocking all of them, is going to be this very next feature I want to talk about, which is Bixby Text Call. Now, this one is new on Samsung Winnie Y 5.1, so, so maybe some phones might not have this, but this is a screen calling service. It's really cool. It's using Bixby to get this thing done. You can also go inside of there and you can edit some of the quick responses. So I did actually add in a few. So here's the main one, call you later. I can't talk right now, but I'll call you back later. And you just basically tap this as they are speaking as your response. So this way you don't have to talk to them. I also added this one in, nope. So basically, if I want to say not interested, thanks for calling, I just tap that and that's what they're going to hear. Uh, and then I also have another one that I added in, take me off, which means no thank you, take me off of your call list. So there's a few that I added in there. You can add more quick responses if you want to. Now I did use this actually two or three times. I had a couple phone calls come in that I looked to me to be spam. I selected the option of the Bixby uh, text call. 
So I'm gonna show you what it looked like, but I got it at the very end, but I'm still gonna show you what it said for me. So this is what it said for me. That was a random number. I'm pretty sure it is spam, but basically when I selected the Bixby text call, this is what popped up. It says, hi, I'm using Bixby text call to convert your voice into text and respond to you. If you want to continue, say who you are and why you're calling. Now, if they would have said something, it would actually pop up right here, letting me know who is calling and why. And then here is my responses on the very bottom. Call you later, urgent, repeat that. And if I was to move over, there was more options too. So when you saw that first one where it's like a, 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 a like one you know nickname and then the longer sentence, that's what these are right here. Now, basically once it got to the very end and you'll actually see it going through the whole paragraph. Again, I got it at the very end because what happened was right after that, then they basically just uh, hung up and that's it. So I wish I would have you know done a screen record right before that but I accidentally answered it and then I went inside of my, my video recorder and, and I totally missed it, but that's okay. You got the gist of what it does. It's a screen call that you're able to do. So really there's two things inside of your phone app you can take a look at, Bixby text call and caller ID spam protection. This next feature and setting that I wanna show you is one that can help you save a little bit of battery life. It's gonna help you connect to your Wi-Fi is better. You can save some, delete some, and if you leave the range, it'll turn off Wi-Fi. When you get inside of range, it'll actually turn on the Wi-Fi. So there's two things I'm gonna show you. It's gonna be inside of settings and you wanna go inside of connections and then you click on Wi-Fi. And on the very top right-hand side, you go to advanced settings. So inside of advanced settings of your Wi-Fi settings, you have this option here, manage networks. So any network that you have ever connected to, you can actually get them saved. So there's, they're set up as a saved network. And if there's some that you maybe moved away from or you don't really use as often, you can actually take them off of your saved uh, networks basically. Now what's going to be pretty cool is that when you go back one page, you go to the very top and you go inside of intelligent Wi-Fi. Now intelligent Wi-Fi gives you this option here, turn Wi-Fi on off automatically. Turn on Wi-Fi automatically when you're in places you use it frequently and turn it off elsewhere. So what will happen is when you leave your home or you leave your office or anywhere that you always connect to Wi-Fi, what you're going to do is it's going to disconnect and then you can turn off the Wi-Fi itself. Anytime you ever come back, it'll automatically turn on for you. So this way you don't have to be at your own home using mobile network when it should have automatically turned on. So this one option right here will save you battery because what will happen is if your Wi-Fi is on when you're not at your home and you're walking downtown Chicago, New York, walking down your random suburbs, wherever you may be, it's going to be scanning and searching for Wi-Fi networks to connect to. Now, if you don't need to connect it, you don't need to waste your battery in the background trying to get connected. And then the other ones you can take a look at are gonna be right above it. So since we're talking about Wi-Fi, you have switch to mobile data. So if you are trying to use something of your Wi-Fi, you go to the completely other end of the house and it kind of is unstable or slow, instead of it trying to work harder, again, draining some battery, it'll automatically switch just to your mobile network. And then right here, switch to a better Wi-Fi network. So automatically switch to Wi-Fi networks that are faster or more stable than your current network. So if you have two or three different internet connections at the building or house that you're at, it'll switch to the better option. This next feature is dealing with the S Pen, and this is where you can take quick notes. Now, as you noticed, when I took the S Pen out, it popped up my little air command. Now, there's two things you can do when it comes down to these quick you know, uh, notes and things like that. When you do this option here inside of your S Pen settings, when it says when S Pen is removed, create note. So this is one way that you can create a note right away the moment your S Pen is removed. Uh, the other thing you can do is one that's actually technically referred to as quick note. That means if your S Pen is already out, you press and hold on the S Pen button, you double tap the screen, and now you're able to make your notes and jot stuff down. And then if you were to exit out automatically, it's just going to save into your phone. The only way you can really delete it is if you go to the very top and you go to delete if there is something that you really don't need to save. Now there is one thing I do wanna show you because maybe if you were to press and hold the S Pen button, double tap, maybe your quick notes doesn't come up. Well, if you go inside of your settings, you're gonna see it right here. It's called quick notes. So press and hold the S Pen button, tap the screen twice with the S Pen to create a new note. Now, this used to be something that was not an option to toggle on or off. It actually used to always be on, but it was a hidden feature that not many people knew from past Note devices. Now, this next feature is one inside of the camera, and it's pretty cool. Sometimes people either forget about it or maybe they have never touched it. But when you go inside your camera and you go to more, it's going to be single take. So what single take does is it's a way that you're able to hit the shutter button once, but it records many things for you which means, as example, it'll do like highlight videos. It'll, it'll make slow-mo clips of whatever you just got done doing. It'll also make boomerang clips. It'll make 
filtered pictures. It'll make collages for you and crap, uh, crop, <laughs> and cropped shots. So if there's any of these that you don't want it to do, just leave the other ones highlighted. But you might as well keep everything because you never know what you're going to get from whatever you're taking a picture of. So I did one little example, actually two little examples, and I'll show it to you. I kind of wish I would have done it at another, you know, another place. I wish I would have done it at this situation here because he was having a bunch of fun with a whole bunch of air being blown up in his face. And with me moving around, I'd be able to get a bunch of different shots and boomerangs and cropped images and things like that of whatever he was doing. So I wish I would have remembered it at that point. Uh, but here we are. Uh, when it comes down to single take, you're going to have, it's going to show you down to the very bottom. So this right here, these are just regular images, uh, but this right here is single take and it, you can see how many pictures or videos comes from it. So there's actually seven in this one. Uh, so you have a regular uh, crowned image. It thinks is best. It'll create one that's called like a boomerang effect. You have a fast forward clip. So it's a fast forward clip of everything he did crop shot. But even though he was moving a ton, it didn't really grab anything good. Here's a filtered one, another filtered one, and then the original image. So if they weren't jumping up and down like that, you would probably get some really good pictures. And this one was very simple. Uh, there wasn't really much that I could do with this one. I just wanted to give you a few examples. So here's like a crop shot. Here's a collage that it created. Here's a filtered you know, picture, and then here's the original. So it's pretty fun that you can go through and do something with single take. Again, I really wish I would have done it with this situation right here because this right here was just hilarious, and I bet I would have gotten something really cool from this one. Even a boom boomerang effect would be pretty fun with this one as well. Uh, but again, single take is one of those things that is, is uh, something that's highly underrated. And it's pretty fun because you might be able to get multiple shots just from hitting the shutter button once. This next feature is going to be one dealing with how you can edit your lock screen from the lock screen itself. So the next time that you're in your lock screen, press and hold on it. Uh, we're going to go inside of the phone. When you press and hold on the lock screen, this right here allows you to make your edit. So you don't have to go through all the settings. Uh, so down here, you can change what application is on the bottom left. You tap here, you can change what you want to be on the bottom right. If you're to tap right here, you can actually add in whatever sentence or contact info you want to do right there. So you can put your number there if you feel like you might lose your phone and people can call it or you can write like, I am legend or something like that. Uh, up over here, you can move these things around. So here's the time you can change. Uh, you know, what you want the time to look like. So if you want it to look like this, this, if you want uh, no clock, so really you can just kind of move these around. You can make them bigger. You can make them smaller, you know, however you want it to look, you can change the colors on the bottom. This right here is going to be the whole entire color palette. If you want to have a specific color, but these ones over here is just going to go based off of what, you know, wallpaper is being shown. So because it's going to change all the time, again, I'm going to press and hold. I'm going to show you what it looks like with this green one. So it'll, it'll change because I have dynamic lock screen on, but basically you're able to go and you can change wallpapers. You can hit done. You can move things around, make them bigger, smaller. You can show if you want details, icon only, none. Uh, a couple things that you can do. Here's one going to be with the clock again, bigger, smaller, uh, whatever you would like to use. I think this is the only options that I've got uh, right here. And yeah, so you can change anything from your lock screen really just by doing a press and hold on the lock screen itself. Now, the very last feature that I want to cover is a way that you're able to unlock your phone with the S Pen button. Now, a lot of people might not like the security threat of this, but if you're just at home and you set your S Pen down, you go flip burgers and get milk and maybe you go to the kitchen to do another thing. Maybe you have to go to the restroom and, or maybe you change the TV, whatever the case may be. And you come back to your phone, you have your S Pen just sitting there. The screen is timed out. You're able to get back in without having to go through your credentials, even though a lot of the credentials are always really quick. But I just want to show you how you're able to get this done. You go inside of the advanced features and you go to S Pen. Now inside of the S Pen settings, you go to more S Pen settings and there's the S Pen unlock. So it's a way that you're able to press the button on the S Pen to unlock your phone, but it's only if you're already in a session with the S Pen and you've already unlocked the phone. So what's gonna happen is let's say that somebody tries to, you know, uh, maybe they try to get my S Pen right now, maybe the screen like timed out and they wanna hit the S Pen button to unlock it, it's still locked. There's no way that they can get in. But if the S Pen is out, and then you unlock your phone, you basically gave the credentials with that you know, S Pen setting that we turned on with the S Pen unlock. You gave it the credentials that when the S Pen is out and you unlock the phone, it means that you're in the session, you're gonna be doing some things. You might walk away, the screen times out. And as you come right on back, you can just pick up the S Pen, hit the S Pen button, boom, it unlocks. It's letting you know that it's unlocked via Smart Lock. Now, I'm gonna show you that screen one more time. It'll show it on the very top. 
phone is unlocked by smart lock, which allows me again, hit the S Pen button, I'm able to get inside my phone because I did the credentials as this was already out. Now, any time that this S Pen disconnects, maybe the battery dies, or you slide the S Pen back in, uh, the moment you do that, you basically took all those credentials away and you have to put back in you know, your, your fingerprint, your face recognition, pattern, pin, whatever it may be, to get back into your phone. So I just wanted to show you that you can unlock it with the S Pen button if that's something that you use all the time. You set it down, you always come back, and maybe your screen time down, you always have to unlock it again. It's one of those cool things that you're able to do. So that was everything that I figured that, you know, you just need to know about your Samsung phone because they're cool features. They help out, you know, be optimized of your phone, or maybe have a better experience with the phone. So let me know in the comment section below which of these features maybe you didn't know, maybe which ones they are your favorite currently, maybe which ones you want to start using. Uh, but yeah, let me know in the comment section below. Hopefully you guys appreciate this video. If you did, give it a big thumbs up. Don't forget to hit subscribe. Subscribe in the very bottom left hand side. And if you like this video, the more than likely you'll also like this video. And I'll see you guys later. Thank you.